The following program is a presentation of Grace Communion International and Grace Communion Seminary and is made possible by generous donations from viewers like you. On this episode of You're Included, Kathy Detto, author and speaker from Trinity Study Center, discusses theology and its role in our everyday relationships. Our host is Dr. J. Michael Fazell. Kathy, thanks for being with us today. Thank you very much, Mike. I'm glad to be here. When we talk about Trinitarian theology, it sounds so academic uh, to so many people. What does it mean for just plain day-to-day -day relationships? Well, uh, it's a big question. But what I'm going to try to do with it is talk about uh, my own life a little bit as a Christian minister over the years. I primarily thought that my relationships were what I did for God. And I would uh, go out and try to minister to people and take care of what I thought they needed in the name of God and come back and let God know how I had succeeded or failed in doing those things. And I think the best thing I can say, the simplest way to put it is, when I began to understand Trinitarian theology, I began to understand that I was not taking seriously the reality, the presence, and the activity of the triune God in the immediate circumstances of my life, that I was thinking of him as somewhat distance. So when I began to take that more seriously, that I don't just work for Christ, but He is in me, and His Spirit is always working, and the Father is always already leading. Then I began to realize the best way I could understand it was, do I believe that God is really here in my conversation with you, in my conversation with other people? Is He working already in your life? Am I just participating in what He is doing? I think way too often what I have found for most people uh, when they are working in relationships is they do a disconnect. They believe, they can even believe God's triune, uh, He loves me as the whole God, but as soon as they walk out of a service and they go into a situation where they're talking with family or they're talking with friends, they pretty much think of themselves as being on their own. And what I have tried to help other people with, what I've tried to do for myself, is live as if God, the God I've come to know in Jesus, is more real in some ways even than I am. He already is mediating in Christ between me and somebody else. His Spirit is already at work. So when I am with somebody else, I try to listen to what He is saying, I attempt to live in His presence, abide in Him, and not speak until I have a sense of what He has for me to say. It makes relationships more dynamic in that sense, and it helps me to remember that my role in being with people is to remain in the peace of God, not try to fix anything, not try to answer all the questions right away but to see what God has for me to say. So what is it about God that helps you to feel that way and to have that kind of a sense of, be, of being in relationship with, with other people? Primarily, God always comes to me with grace and light. God is the one who includes me in, as you would say, into his loving circle of Father, Son, and Spirit. God's grace in Christ teaches me that God loved me and loves me before I'm ever even interested in him. So when I start my day, that God has already been at work all night, and he welcomes me to be a part of what he's doing. It allows me to have confidence that it is not up to me to know Again, what the right thing is to say to somebody else, how to complete something. Let me give you an example. With my family, I was um, visiting my family recently, and I wanted to 
I had a certain idea of what I wanted to have happen in some of my conversations. I think we're all like that, right? We can go into something with an agenda of what we want to see happen, and it'll be successful if I've been able to accomplish my agenda. So we're focused on the agenda, yes, not on the person. That's right. And what ends up happening, and not, not, not on God either. I'm focusing on my agenda, but I think I'm focusing on you because I have an agenda for how I want you to go. I'm, I'm hoping that you're going to hear what I have to say. Or think about times when you want to confront people, right? You feel like you need to have this moment of confrontation. But what they, what we often forget is, but God is actually living and present. He knows you better than I know you. Uh, he knows my mother better than I know her. When I go into that conversation, if I am living in the, as much as possible, in the reality of the Trinitarian life, then I'm trusting that God was there before me, that he already is at work in my mother, and he has his own agenda for that time. But that his main agenda for me is to trust that he has an agenda, to listen for him, to be aware of him, rather than rushing in, even with my good intentions. Our agendas are oftentimes for something good for somebody else. But we stop living in his peace. We stop abiding as soon as we try to make what we want to have happen be first. So you can actually be in the relationship, enjoy the person for who they are, right? Uh, without knowing that God has an agenda before, during, and after. He'll be there with that person, just as he is with you or me. Right. It makes things a lot more free, to, right? Free, right. Yeah. A lot more peaceful. Um, but also, I think in some ways, um, I'm going to use an example, I, I guess, primarily being a mother. I have adult kids. And there are times when I feel that my wisdom is exactly what they need mm -hmm. to hear right now. <laughs> I will really be able to straighten this out if they will just listen to what I have to say. But if I believe that God is real, that His grace isn't just a packet I was given, but that He's pushing in into this situation right now with His reality, He is pushing into their lives by the Spirit in Christ all the time. Then if I attempt to just listen more to what he's saying, and I don't have a sense that he's leading me to say anything, he's not opening a door for me, unless, of course, I try to cram something in, and then obviously he's not leading me. Because sometimes he's leading me just to be quiet and to make a nice meal for my son instead of trying to offer anything more. When we live as if God is a real then we can truly be at peace. We can know his rest. We can be confident that he will always be more faithful than we are. It is never up to us. And it has had a radical uh, effect on my relationships with others, on my relationships with people in the church, in my family, with my friends. If I attempt to be with them by truly letting God lead first, Another example I can think of, I was talking to a friend of mine who was on a church committee, and she said, I don't know what I'm supposed to say, Kathy, when I go into this. I'm not exactly sure how to, how to deal with it. There's going to be some conflict. I said, well, try to picture Jesus being with you. Try to have an image of him, actually. He's in the meeting with you, and he's calling you to enjoy his presence while you're there. How will that change how you're in that meeting? When we realize he's as much loves that other person, is involved with that other person just as much as he is with us. Right. And how it makes it a lot easier oh, yes. to just be with the person, enjoy the person for who they are, and not have to feel like, well, I've got, I've got to get my two cents worth in. I, you know, right. You, you can lead a horse to water, not, you can't make him drink. We know that about horses. Mm hmm. <laughs> but we still try to do it with, with uh, each other all the time. And what it comes down to is, do I really trust him enough? I think the answer ends up being no. I'm not sure you're going to show up. I'm not sure you're going to be active. I'm not sure you're going to be present. 
So I'll cover those last 10 yards for you. And besides, I'm really a wise person. I know a lot. And trust me, God, I'm sure I can take care of this for you. It's it's humbling, but yes, it's also a lot easier to live as if God is the greatest reality in your life. And he's currently active. He didn't just give you a list. To take care of but he's breaking in always ahead of you and behind you and around you there's never a time where he's leaving you alone so your relationship with a person is more important than some agenda you might have for that person that's right well the funny thing is what are you trying to invite people into you're trying to invite them into the peace that you're living in but if you're frantically trying to get them into that what you have nothing to offer. You don't have any peace. That's right. You, le- <laughs> you left the peace back here in hopes of being able to still have a message. That's the thing we're always afraid isn't going to be true. How much am I going to love somebody unless I get to say everything I think I need to say, unless they come to appreciate me the way I want them to appreciate me? But if God is holding on to that, I, one of the phrases I've been using recently in my Bible study is, we live suspended in the grace of God. If we really are living suspended in the grace of God, and the person I'm talking to, whoever they are, also does, they may be resisting that, but that's really where they live. There's no other place to live. Exactly, there isn't any other place to live. Then I can trust that God is going to allow me to participate in his work as I let go of having to have things go whatever way I think they do. Amen. Amazingly, he may actually be working with you in that setting more than he is with the other person. Go figure. Yeah. (laughs) In fact, that's what I often find to be true. I'm sure you have found that to be true as a parent is as God allows you by his grace more and more to let go of all the ideas that you may have had when they were younger about what you Mm -hmm. were going to be able to accomplish for them. I can honestly say that he has blessed me tremendously through them. I hope they will learn as much Mm -hmm. as I have through being their parent. And a lot of times, yes, it's been, well, maybe another way to think about some of this in terms of Trinitarian theology has been to take more seriously his grace in never allowing anything that he won't and can't redeem in your life and in your children's life. Taking seriously that he knows your your sins, your problems, the unwise choices that you may have made at times. And he's going to redeem that. We participate even in our parenting with God. He is the ultimate parent. We're not. And uh, I've had to go through some things in my life where I've had to realize he never called me to be my children's parent because I was perfect. Um, But he called me. He called me knowing that he could redeem everything. He could bring it all to his glory. And he's not ashamed to call me his sister, as it says in Hebrews. It frees our relationships up so much because we can let go. Right. Without, we, we we can respect the other person in a way that we might not. Uh, because we often go into conversations thinking we're superior. Yes, that actually brings up another or very good point. Or intimidated, yes. one or the other. Not. Well, we can give what we actually have to give yeah. in God's hands, and we can receive what the other person actually has to give, which we oftentimes, as you were just saying, we don't do. I won't receive something from somebody if I'm hoping for something else from them. Mm-hmm. The funny thing I have found about when I live in the peace of God is it helps me to be more actually present to the other person. I can see and hear what they're actually saying instead of thinking ahead to, okay, what's the next thing I'm going to say? What's my move in this? Sort of like a chess game instead of an actual conversation. And it's enabled me to rejoice over the little things sometimes that somebody else can give me because that is what they can give me. That may be all that they can give me right now. But in God's grace, it's enough. And... I realized way too often I have worked past people instead of actually being present with them. So, yes, I would totally agree that's what it does. 
even in interviewing, you can get into a frame of mind that you know you, you've got you know where you want it to come out. Let's mm -hmm. say. And so you want to guide it in that direction and kind of get to that point. You see it on TV all the time, especially right. in, with pundits and so on. Right. They, they, they've got a, an angle. Mm -hmm. And so they often don't even let the other person talk. And I find myself doing the same thing. I think, well, this is the point I want the viewers to, you know, to, mm -hmm. to, to learn from this. And so I want to guide it in that direction instead of letting it go the direction it needs to go and is going to go because it's the person that you're interviewing. That's right. The reason they're there is because you figure they must have something worthwhile to say. But, but in, aren't our kids the same way? I mean, you know, don't we care about the relationship in them mm -hmm. more than molding them into some image that we think they ought to have? Yes, and being willing to let go of that image allows us to take seriously the triune God. A lot of times we just don't take him that seriously. We take a lot of other things about our lives and what we think we should be able to do and what it means to be successful a lot more seriously than we do the presence and activity of the triune God in our lives. And it's led to a lot of surprises in my life being able to let go. It's also enabled me to be more joyful with people. Uh, because my joy isn't coming from the immediate situation or the immediate relationship. God is always there. He's always with us. He's already at work. Wow, what will that mean? It's quite an adventure. I have no idea where this might go. Uh, and that enables me to be not just more peaceful, but more enthusiastic about seeing where he wants to take me next. He'll, his plans will always be good and for my good, even though, as you were saying, sometimes it's a little hard to let go of some of those things we thought made us who we are, and they didn't really. Sometimes a person that you care about is doing something you think, well, this is harmful or destructive, and I don't like this kind of behavior. Right. And therefore, I've got to tell them that right. and make it clear to them where I stand right. on this. And it's as, as though we forget, well, God knows this too. Mm -hmm. And to do that usually doesn't work. No. It harms the relationship instead of maintaining it so that a person can hear us. That's right. I've had it, two of my children go through some very difficult times in their lives. Um, my oldest daughter went through anorexia many years ago. And this was probably when I first started working through a lot of this in terms of my family um, relationships. And I was watching her really disappear before my eyes. What can I do? What, what do you want me to do? And we tried forcing her to eat, all kinds of things. And I remember sitting in the kitchen one time and saying, God, I don't know what, I'm feeling desperate, please. I, I can't do anything. What, what do you want me to do? I'm ready to listen. What do you want me to do? He said, make her a cup of tea and just take it back to her and say, I love you. You know, you are terrific because that's what I have to say to her. So that's the one thing I want you to say. And it was amazing to me that he freed me in that moment to experience his grace in my own life and to extend his grace to her and to realize that's what she needed to hear. Not all, again, not all of my wisdom, not all of my uh, fears. Because a lot of times when we're busy trying to fix things, the one thing we're forgetting to tell people is God's grace has already broken in. If that were true, how, what would we be saying to each other? If we were living, is that were true? How would that change every single comment that we make? in every single interaction that we have. Isn't that scary for people when they know somebody's doing something that, you know, is harmful for them, and then, but, and, and then all you're going to do is say to yourself, well, I know that God is, loves this person, is working for their redemption, and he can do that a lot better than I can. In other words, it's just so hard to just give them grace mm -hmm. because we feel like we're, compromising with sin or something and instead of 
giving them what they need. We're afraid of grace. It's yes. It's like doing nothing or something. That's right. And yet, that's where God starts, and that's where He continues to go with us every day. I do not get up in the morning because I decided that I would go ahead and living for another day. I just made that decision. <laughs> I wake up and discover, oh, God has given me another day. He continues to love me. He delights in me. And that is a scary thing to say to somebody else. It's a scary thing to hear because we're so afraid that that means right, that there's nothing that's going to change. But the gospel is God, by giving us grace, makes a possibility of something changing. Uh, and if I want my daughter to change, don't I want her to change out of a sense that this is not who you are. This is not the last word on you. I love you. And more importantly, God loves you. The whole God is here. And he has so much more for you than this. Unfortunately, again, a lot of times when we're trying to correct something, yes, we start fearing. And I, my son went through something far worse. I won't, I won't go into it, but it, it, it was the last couple of years of my life have been some of the hardest I've ever had to go through as a mother um, and as a person. And there would be times when I would have to get up in the morning and I would have to say, God, help me to remember even my prayers could become, oh, God, please, please, please. But that's not living in the Trinitarian reality. The reality is, I am so glad that even now you haven't left us. I am We're so, in your hands. Yeah, I'm so grateful. Not just me, but my son, my family. And that you were, you were there all the way through all of this. And you will redeem it because of who you are. Not just because of some whim. This is who you are. Having said that, I could go into my day with grace. I could say yeah. when he came out, oh, I love you so much. I'm so glad that you're here and leave it at that. It was yeah, radical. Don't, don't we even, even with what you just said, don't we like to try to talk them into that? In other words, we can't even leave it like you just said, right. leave it at that. We have to to try to talk them into, no, well, you know, God does love you, and you mm -hmm. want to, we want to make sure they know that, and right. that they agree with us about right. that. Mm -hmm. We don't know how to just trust God to be who He is with them and for them. Right, it's a far more radical trust. Yeah. But this is the dynamic living in God that, that we're talking about, and trusting that Jesus me actually mediates our relationships. Yeah. We never, He never says, okay, this one's on your own. Go out yeah. there. I hope it works out okay for you. But that is the problem, right? We, we'll trust them up to a certain point. But, oh, gosh, well, if it meant having to give up everything in my life to be a Christian, well, I don't know about this. I mean, yeah. does that mean that I have to give up what I think my reputation should be in terms of my mothering, you know, and in terms of other things that I do? Do I have to trust you in, in all of these ways? Yeah. But that's really what it would mean to take him at his word. And when we do that, it actually is easier, isn't it? It's smoother a lot sailing. Easier. And, and it, it it leaves a place, a room for the for the mm -hmm. child to to come to their own conclusions instead yes. of having to circle the wagons against us all the time. Oh, and it's a lot more fun too. I mean my son has come home sometimes and found uh I'm dancing to some music with my daughter. I mean, I've danced a lot more in the last two years than I thought I would yeah. <laughs> because I really do trust that God is at work. Yeah. Uh, and he's at work with me, and I don't have to justify myself. I don't have to be able to say, well, you know, all these things that happened, none of them had to do with me. Yeah, some of them did. I'm sure they did. I was not a perfect mother. Yeah. Uh, to be able to let go of each one of those places, I try to find my identity and my life and yeah. know in, at, at the bottom, his hands are holding on to me. Yeah, it's a, I think I'm a much, ha I'm, I think they like being around me more, you know, as yeah. wise as I was before. I think I was somewhat of a yeah. battle axe because <laughs> I had to make sure my wisdom got out yeah, to everybody. Absolutely. I think that you're far, far from alone. <laughs> <laughs> not just mothers yeah yeah and fathers often make it even worse because mm -hmm. there's the the whole authority thing right. involved as well
Right, and we can do that in churches. We come in with our agenda for a meeting. Yeah. And it's not bad to have an agenda, but I've noticed a lot of times, again, God rubber stamps our, agen our agenda instead of, no, why don't we see if God, let's pray together and see what God has in mind, what he wants yeah. to do. We are not in charge. We're really not. If he wants to end a program in the church, let's be ready for that to happen instead of having to keep things going because we've decided we know what should happen. People are more important than programs, and being together is more important than getting something done. Right, absolutely. Because that's what we're trying to get done, is be together. Yeah, that's the weird <laughs> thing about it. That's what I was trying to say about noticing in my evangelism that I had become so uptight about trying to help people become Christians. If I could sit on the other side and see what I was looking like, I wouldn't want to become a Christian either. Exactly. Uh, yeah. it's, it's all about judgmental. Exactly. You've been watching You're Included, a production of Grace Communion International.